morning. Thank you all for having me. So I'm here to talk about the anatomy of a malware attack, past, present, and future. What does that mean? Let's talk about the agenda. It's very simple. We're going to talk about the past, the present, we're going to talk about the future. And we're going to have many bad pictures along the way to demonstrate a little bit about this. And when I mean the past, I don't actually... Hey, guys. I think... Uh... No, I thought I'd give the AV guys a little bit of a heart attack. So, many of you have probably not actually seen a ransomware attack, despite listening to it on the news, reading about it in the media. This is what it actually looks like. And my files here have been encrypted fully. I don't have access to them anymore. And I have to pay a ransom of 1,000 euros to actually get them back. And we talk a lot about ransomware and attacks in the news and the media, but we don't actually show what they, what they look like. So I thought I'd give the uh, AV guys uh, a heart attack in the back there. If you guys want to see it again, it's, uh, well, it doesn't look like it goes back. So anyway, this is, uh, this is a awesome uh, ransomware attack crypto locker. All right, let's go back to this and not do that again. So let's talk about the past. Again, it's just going to be really this, uh, this century, not going back into the 1980s where we talk about viruses that weren't really for profit. So, okay, let's start with the past. I think the best way to talk about the past of malware is really start with the founding of Malwarebytes. How many of you have seen something like this on your computer before? Okay, liars for everybody that has their hand down. Pop-ups, right? So back in 2003, when I started the company, I was just 14 years old. Um, I had something like this on my computer and had really no idea what to do. Um, I went online, I searched for symptoms, I searched for all the text that you see here, and I did have a traditional antivirus on my computer, but it just let the threat right through. Now, to be fair, I was downloading pirated video games. Uh, I have not done that since, but I am guilty for why I got infected. So I went online, I searched for my symptoms, and I found a security forum, a group of superheroes looking to help people like me get malware off of their computer. I posted my question, and somebody came to my rescue. They gave me a, about a 100-page pamphlet and said, go follow these steps. And I was poor, I was 14 years old, didn't really have any money to go to a tech repair shop and get it fixed, so I said, why not follow them? My computer was clean three days later, but you know, it took three days to get there. So I said, uh, to heck with this, uh, I'm going to try to disrupt the space and, and get antivirus back on track. And that's really the founding behind Malwarebytes. I picked up one of those uh, Visual Basic 6 for Dummies books. Uh, for anybody here that's an engineer, Visual Basic 6 was like defunct back in 2000. Here I am in 2004 reading a four dummies book. Anybody remember Bonsai Buddy? Yeah. The whole point is malware back in 2004, 2005 was lame. I mean, really lame. It was a talking purple gorilla that ran across your screen that you didn't want. You didn't actually install yourself. It came prepackaged with, with a bunch of shit that you, uh, you didn't want. So this little gorilla ran around screen and, uh, and basically annoyed you, and it was very, very difficult to get him off. That was the extent of malware back in 2004. If you fast forward today, that's the malware of today. That's real. That is not a picture on top of that command prompt. That is the jigsaw ransomware. That thing gets on your computer, it infects all of your, uh, or encrypts all of your files and asks for a ransom, uh, and you have 72 hours to pay. Do you think you're going to get your files back unless, uh, unless you pay? The answer is no. These, uh, these ransomware attacks use pretty much military-grade encryption, and the only real way is to find a decryptor online or actually pay the ransom. So imagine having a PhD thesis that you've been working on for two years, and now it's encrypted, completely gone, because the attackers, uh, you, you downloaded something and a, an attacker wanted to get money from you. That's kind of the state of malware today. So let's talk a little bit more about the present. This is uh, the SF Muni uh, that was attacked with ransomware. That is a ticket kiosk in San Francisco. If you attempted to buy a ticket to the Muni that specific day, you were not able to. And in fact, the Muni had to make tickets uh, free for that, for that day. Now, I would argue that Muni is a critical infrastructure, and these criminals actually took down critical infrastructure with a simple ransomware attack. If you, look at the actual, uh, if you look at the actual screen at one of the train uh, kiosks, it says, you hacked all data encrypted, contact for key. And, uh, and you better believe that the uh, SF Muni did not actually pay for this, but they were down for the entirety of that day. So these, these attacks are real. They are impacting critical infrastructure. Let's look at uh, Hollywood Presbyterian. Hollywood Presbyterian was a, a hospital in LA that was affected with, uh, with ransomware. 
And uh, at first, the attackers wanted several uh, tens of millions of dollars to actually give back the patient data. So patient data was completely encrypted. Um, they were, uh, nurses, doctors were not able to actually access information about the patient and, and document information about the patient, things like allergies and so on. Uh, now we're putting uh, people's lives at risk. So again, the attackers wanted uh, tens of millions of dollars, and uh, in fact, they ended up with a measly $17,000. But the, atta uh, the attackers did get paid in Bitcoin $17,000. So these attacks are successful. One other uh, interesting attack, and again, this is all the, the present state of malware, uh, was Mirai Botnet. I don't know how many of you have heard of uh, the Mirai Botnet, but in, a, in today's uh, world, we pretty much connect everything to the internet, right? We connect, uh, for whatever reason, Barbie dolls, uh, our thermostats, our refrigerators, pretty much everything. And in fact, we've run out of IP addresses to connect these devices uh, with to the internet. So Mirai was an interesting attack. Uh, it was basically a script that ran and scoured the internet for these unprotected devices, the, many of which I've, I've listed, Barbie dolls, thermostats, and so on, video cameras. And with a set of about 30 different creden credentials, passwords, usernames, and passwords, these attackers were able to take hundreds of thousands of devices and point them at Dyn DNS and other uh, uh, assets on the internet. So my favorite website, Reddit, was actually down. Facebook, Twitter, uh, many other services were down. And all it took was several hundred thousand Barbie dolls connected to the internet and pointed at an asset. And the whole idea here is there are so many internet connected devices with default credentials uh, for no reason whatsoever. First of all, why is a Barbie doll connected to the internet? That's just my claim. And second of all, when you go buy a router at Best Buy today and you take it off the shelf and you plug it into your computer uh, and you log into it for the first time, do you remember what the password is? It's admin for the username, it's password for the password. That's why there were only really 30 credentials that they had to use. There weren't many possibilities out there. So these attackers wrote a script, basically found all of these devices on the internet as quickly as they could and pointed them at an asset. Why is that important? Well, I'll get to that in a second. So the, the whole premise behind malware today is it's not actually these criminals sitting in you know, pover, thir third world uh, countries living in poverty trying to attack us. It's, it's common criminals. It's, it's people like you and I that are sitting at home and buying these kits off the internet and, and taking them down. In fact, many of the uh, attacks that I just described, aside from Mirai, were really not targeted. They weren't somebody saying, I'm going to go take down SF Muni or Hollywood Presbyterian. They were common criminals that tried to infect as many people as possible, try to get as much money as possible, and then found out that they actually have a big fish on the hook and try to milk that. So, in fact, it's so easy that I decided to try it myself. That's me. Uh, over uh, last weekend, just for the sake of this demo, I decided to, uh, to show you how I did it. So first things first, I did what any of you would do. I Googled how to buy ransomware. Why not start pretty simple? I found out uh, on Forbes here that there's a ransomware as a service being offered for $39 on the dark net. Pretty intriguing. Let's go further. So then I used uh, a poor man's Tor search, uh, Amia here, and I typed in cheap ransomware. This really exposes uh, the dark web, gives you some access to things that uh, you wouldn't get just searching Google. So we typed in cheap ransomware. I found this forum, uh, and it was actually a two for one. This forum was selling exploit kits, ransomware kits, and in fact, they were even selling an email spam service. So full turnkey solution, all I did was go on this forum, I could go buy some ransomware, I can then give it to this email spam service and they would spam it out for me. Uh, a couple people have to click on the, on the link, open it, install the ransomware, pay me. It's not that hard, especially at $500 a pop, right? There's some plans in pricing. Again, very similar e-commerce page to everything we're used to in terms of buying, right? There's uh, the basic package and the, and the big package. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of features. They even give you world-class first-class uh, first support. So again, at the cost of $50, I can buy ransomware and utilize it. Here's another ransomware builder. This helps me evade uh, antivirus for $50. You know, we're piecing all of this together, and, and we've got a nice kit here that we can actually go infect people. And again, if we land a hospital, we can simply reel it in and see how much they're willing to pay. Here's a review, like a YouTube review of products that you actually search for, of a ransomware builder, version 2. Uh, this has much more views now that, uh, after, after I took this, but it read like a real product review. Here's the good stuff, here's the bad stuff, here's what you're getting when you buy it. So. All of that has probably scared the hell out of you. Let's talk a little bit about the future. Get it? The future? I told you there were going to be really bad slides. So imagine a world where something like Mirai, which has now been open sourced, is actually utilized to take down important, even more important critical services, right? Nuclear power plants and so on. But I actually think there's a more feasible attack, and that's pointing 
something like a Mirai botnet, hundreds of thousands of devices at a revenue generating product. So you look at United Airlines or any airline uh, ticketing system or Ticketmaster or any ticketing system in general, right? They make tens of million dollars per day selling flights, tickets, and so on. Imagine pointing Mirai or, or something similar at one of those services, at critical infrastructure, and holding it for ransom. You're no longer in, encrypting files, you're, you're holding something actually for ransom, right? Not just files, but actual critical services. So I do see uh, a future where we're actually battling these attackers that are taking down a website that's generating tens of millions of dollars a day. Facebook, in, rev in ad revenue, generates tens of millions of dollars a day, right? Imagine it being held hostage for only a million dollars. Wouldn't Facebook want to pay? So I do think we're actually going to be battling more with, uh, with these types of criminals who are looking not just to s encrypt our files, potentially post them to the, to the internet, but go after critical infrastructure that affects both you and I. Last lame picture, I swear. So how do we fight back? How do we, as, uh, as the cybersecurity industry, how do we as, as consumers fight back? How do we businesses, as businesses fight back? Well, it's kind of like 300, right? Uh, there's not many of us cybersecurity professionals. In fact, there is a shortage of several hundred thousand just in the US alone, several million worldwide. Uh, I went to the University of Illinois. Uh, I graduated in 2012. I hope you feel really old. My computer science degree had no focus on security whatsoever. This was 2012. We are four years later, and there really is still not much progress in that. So I do think universities do need to step up their game in terms of pumping out cybersecurity professionals. Um, as Martin said, I think there's bug bounties that certainly will help the industry. Uh, we have a long way to go as an industry, and I hope at least by my talk here, you've, uh, you've convinced yourself that you want to enter the cybersecurity professional profession. And with that, uh, I just want to thank you all for coming. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at mkluczynski. All right, thank you.